I am Cristina Gallegos. I'm a philanthropy strategist, and I help people use their wealth to change, to change the world. I basically create superheroes, the affluent and obscure, and uh, if you're interested in that, we can talk later. I turned 47 a few hours ago, and the first... <laughs> awesome, thank you. I was not expecting that, I appreciate it. The first 20 years of my life, I spent in communist Romania, where the only right that I had was the right to keep my mouth shut. And the latest two decades of my life, I spent in California, where pretty much dreaming big is a requirement. It would be very, very hard to imagine two places that are more divergent than those two. And at the same time, in the space between the totally oppressive and totally liberal, I have learned that no matter who you are and no matter where are you from, you can solve big problems. Because most big problems are of human conception. It's, are the humans the center of the problem? So, a bit of a show of hands, I promise I'm not going to do this a lot. How many of you here would like to solve big problems or are already working on big problems? Oh my goodness, that's amazing. That's like 82% of the room. And uh, how many of you would say, I have a big ego? Be honest. Show of hands. All right, a couple of honest people. Here's the trick. All of you who raised the hand the first time should have raised hands the second time. <laughs> and the alternate title of this presentation should be How Big Egos Use Clams to Solve Multi-Million Dollar Problems. And we'll talk about the clams a little later. But this is what I would like for you to remember because it's really important as the first answer on that question, how we solve big problems. Entrepreneurs and change makers have to believe that they can do it. If you cannot believe that you can do it, you're not gonna even start. So, narcissism is part of that. Self-sufficiency is a dimension of narcissism. And uh, we need to be humble. Another thing that we need is a collection of very fundamental things. Courage, relentless obsession, and I'm very passionate about obsession. People talk about life-work balance, and I think there is no such thing. If you want to tackle big things, you have to be thoroughly obsessed. You need an inkling of a path, you're never going to see the full path. If you see the full path, you're wrong, working on the wrong thing with the wrong timeline. The ability to test solutions, A-B testing has been talked about a lot, particularly in marketing, but it works in pretty much everything. Stamina, which is a really, really big, piece of solving big problems, and the right mindset, right? If, if you can find tactical things to do, those are the easiest thing to do, but more importantly, wrapping your head around it and finding the energy to sustain the effort that you need to do, that is truly, truly critical. Now, what's the deal with the clams? So, in 2017, a large tech firm received a million dollar contract to create, design this very, very sensitive sensor that would enable them to track pollutants underwater. And during the first working meeting with a very interdisciplinary team, around 45 minutes in, the marine biologist walks out and walks back in with a bag of clams and drops it in the middle of the table. And everybody's like, what? And the person explained. Clams have the ability to detect trace amounts of pollutants in the water, and when that happens, they open their shells. Light bulbs went on, and suddenly, these huge complicated problems of designing this very, very sensitive sensor became just the problem of designing a sensor that could detect when the clams open their shells. That is, in essence, a paradigm shift. And that is a critical aspect when we are trying to solve big, big problems. So what's required for this? We need to eat new paradigms. And by the way, that financial tech firm saved 999,000, according to the executive who reported to Harvard's Business Review, and they ate the clams for dinner. So 
we need to eat those new paradigms for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, and also we need to understand the nature of complexity. And the nature of complexity is surprise, complex, right? There are problems that need fact management, and those are relatively in two categories, simple problems like literacy, ingredient A, action B, and somewhere, point C on the timeline, the kid learns to read collectively or individually, and that is a simple problem. It's replicable, you just need to know what to do. And it's not easy, but it is simple. The second set of problems is complicated problems. Those are highly technical, often insurmountable problems. And those could be cracking a disease or building the next quantum computer. Once you figure it out and you crack that complicated problems, you can replicate it with a fair amount of predictability. The second set of problems is collectively grouped into pattern management. And those are, again, two types of problems, very different in size. One is complex, complex category of problems. If you are a parent, you know that if you have a kid and the kid turns out well, there is no guarantee, even if you do the exact same things, that the second kid will be exactly the same, happy and healthy. Or if you do disaster relief and you deal with the hurricanes successfully, there is no guarantee that the second hurricane will, will be dealt with equally su successfully. So in the case of those kind of problems, we need to probe a little bit, sense what's going on, and then design what the approach is. The last category is chaotic problems. Very obvious things like earthquakes and conflict zones where there is zero predictability. And there are, of course, two things you need to do. First, you need to staunch the bleeding and diminish the chaos, whatever is happening there. But the second piece, and this is way more tactical, every time you are in the middle of a chaotic situation, try to extract what is a simple problem, what is a complicated problem, what is a complex problem, and then address those in those particular ways. A little exercise. This is a SpaceX launch, and can somebody tell me what kind of problem that is? I want to see if you guys are paying attention. So is this a simple problem, a complicated problem, a complex problem, a chaotic problem? What kind of problem is this? OK, somebody else? Louder? Chaotic? Another opinion? Simple? Complicated. Elon Musk is a smart man. He chooses the most complicated things. But once he cracks them, he can replicate the solution over and over again. This is a complicated problem. This is not complex, not chaotic, not simple. Interesting, right? Interesting exercise. And I recommend that you take that lens and you filter some of the things you're working with through that and see what the patterns are that you might be able to apply. So when dealing with complex problems, however, this is number one <laughs> order of business you have to embrace the insanity. This is my friend, Jonathan. We are together members of the BMW Foundation Transatlantic Core Group. And we are here on Wasan Island in the Muskoka Lakes in Canada. And in 2016, I was there. Jonathan is jumping from a three-story window into the lake. And I very, very much wanted to do that. And I just couldn't do it. I felt that it was utterly insane. It's like, I'm not going to jump out of the third, three, third story window. I would like that, but I cannot do it. And I went home, and for a year, that window haunted me. I had regrets. I kept thinking about it. Why didn't I do it? I could have done it. I could have at least tried. And that is truly the nature of trying to solve big problems, right? On August 1st, 2017, at 1 a.m., in the pitch black of the night, Canadian night, I actually jumped out of that third story window. There are no pictures because it was absolute blackness. And I landed in the lake and the Milky Way was just above my head like in a National Geographic movie. And it still gives me goosebumps to think about it. When, when I landed in the water, I realized that the person before I jumped through that window was not the same person as the Christina that landed in the lake. And that is the truth with trying to solve any of the SDGs, for example. It only seems insane before you jump through the window. Once you jump through the window, the insanity goes away. 
and you can check this and verify with all the people who are working on the most complex issues. Peace. You can ask a lot of people who work in conflict zones, like, isn't it crazy? Nope. No, it's not crazy because they're doing it. So anything that you want to tackle that feels insane, trust me, just jump through the window. You're going to at least know that you tried. And more importantly, I think that collectively we are here and we do this work because on our deathbed we want to have no regrets. And you will not have any regrets if you do this kind of work. So just because I want you to, before we move to the beer portion of the program tonight, I want you to have some tools, some very specific tools to solve problems. I'm going to give you 10 hacks, and we're going to go pretty fast. Number one, that old dictum, know thyself, still valid. So you better know who you are. You better understand how this is going to affect your time, your family, everything that you really are about. And more importantly, you have to answer the question, why you? Why are you called to do this? Second, you have to pick your battles. What you do is as important as what you choose not to do. And more importantly, you better design a measure to, to enable you to discover how you arrive at your success. Because if you don't know what that is, you're not going to know when you get there. Number three, you need to be patient. Give it time. Most problems have not been created in a day. They're not going to be solved in a day. And success is not in bursts, although media would like us to believe that everything is an overnight success. So, number four, equally important, you have to find the dragon slayer. And if that's you, reference to number one, that's great. But if that's not you, you better find the person who can hold it, who can keep it together, who can inspire people, and who has the strong stomach and a strong vision. Number five, theater, right? All the greatest leaders know this. And you're going to know, and you're going to have to, feed and entertain people, bread and circus. It's been valid for thousands of years and it still works. You need to be able to cajole, to inspire, to motivate people, to sell. How important it is to be able to sell. And you have to evangelize. The world needs to know of the size of the problem you're working on and you need people on your bus. So you better be loud too. Because of the nature of those very, very large problems, it is really important that we keep both the strength to deal with very, very difficult things, very emotional things. The plight of humanity is pretty hard to bear sometimes, so we need to hold that strength at the center of who we are without actually getting lost in it, right? Like, like coders, they get lost in their lines of code. Keep your humanity between strength and vulnerability. Ambiguity, it's going to be there. If you work on something that you think you know what's going on, <laughs> you, you need to dig deeper because this is the kind of work where you are running the bus while building a bus, while laying asphalt in front of your bus at any given time. And that's how those kind of big problems present themselves usually. And it's really, really important not only for yourself to have the ability to tolerate it, but also for others. Number nine, zero visibility. It's never there. Number, that's number nine. You have to play the long game. Again, not overnight. And number 10, know that you know. Catapult asked me to answer this question. What's the biggest challenge? One word answer, people. Every problem is an HR problem, and not just because of the personal dynamics, but because we need to be mindful, as Josh said earlier today, of how our action affect people a thousand years down the road. Then the second question was, what's the biggest opportunity? The fact that we can, the fact that we live in a world where this is possible today. We could not have conceived going to Mars 200 years ago, but today we can. And people ask me all the time, because I'm a philanthropy strategist, oh, can I have your phone number? Because once I sell my startup, I want to come and work with you so we can change the world. And I'm telling them that is unnecessary. You can start today. I don't care who you are, where you're at, you can do this. So begin where you are and never give up. And all of you who said, I want to change the world, please stand up and join me. Thank you.